Welcome back to Meyer Sports of All Sorts. He's been on the job about nine months now. We figured it'd be a good time to check in with the man who runs the University of Cincinnati Athletic Department. He is UC Athletic Director Mike Bone. Mike, thanks for joining us. Good tonight. evening. Thanks. Pleasure to be with you. All right, listen, you inherit coaches. This is something I always found interesting about, about, about ADs and coaches. You, you change chairs and you're, you inherit Tommy Tuberville. Great pedigree, maybe as impressive a pedigree as any head football coach prior to coming to the University of Cincinnati. But how does that work? I mean, it's like you want to come in, you want to put your own stamp on it. You don't want to start running people off, certainly. But, I mean, how does that work when you have to inherit all of your employees? Well, I tell you what, in, in Tommy's case, it's, it's a huge, huge asset like you talked about. He's a Hall of Fame coach. I really believe that. And uh, we are very, very blessed to have him and his passion for Cincinnati and uh, the recruiting class that they're, he and his staff are working on currently ranked in the top 30 in the nation is indicative of how much people think of Tommy Tuberville. So when you research this job, you obviously researched Tuberville and Cronin, the entire athletic department. From the outside looking in, what did you see? Passion, Passion? energy, competitive yeah. spirit, toughness. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that uh, on the first day on the job, seeing uh, uh, Mick Cronin's team beat UConn was really, really That's special. That's right, that was your first day. It was really special. Um, your home football games this season are at Paul Brown Stadium. That's a good thing, certainly, but there's a reason why you're there, and that's because they're renovating, obviously, Nippert Stadium. It's, uh, let's talk about a couple of things here. First, the renovation project. Is it on course, and what's that all about? I know you're going to be happy to get back there next year. And secondly, the challenge of, of playing at Paul Brown Stadium, it's a professional football facility. So first things first, the Nippert uh, situation. Well, with Nippert, we're on budget, we're on time. On budget's and, important. And, uh, we're so thrilled with our partners on campus and with Turner Construction and so many other subs from right here in Cincinnati that are very, very prideful about putting their stamp on Nippert Stadium. And then when you add Mike Brown and the Bengals organization and their support and their passion and their collaboration and their partnership, it's really special. And we're thrilled about it. Our, our student athletes, our players are excited to play down at Paul Brown Stadium. Is it bigger? Yes. Is it going to be a little difficult, more difficult to fill? Absolutely. But uh, I know our students are on campus are excited to come. We have record number of ticket sales there. We have a uh, over a thousand new season ticket holders uh, that want to be a part of it. And so, you know, a lot of people talked about, well, moving from Nippert, you might go backwards a little bit, but we've actually found that we've made some progress. So I don't want to hold your feet to the fire, but is this thing going to open on time, do you think, next time? Absolutely. Week? So you're all set. Absolutely. You probably start the season in July, right, if you wanted to? <laughs> to make up for this late start this year, maybe. You've uh, done some business since you've been here with Mick Cronin. You signed Mick uh, to a long-term contract. I think it's seven years. And I know you know he's done a terrific job. This program, he resurrected it, brought it back to life, all the NCAA tournament appearances. But he's got a facility problem there, too. I know he wants a new facility. What, what's going on with fifth, third, and long-term planning for that? Well, first of all, I think that, that Coach Cronin understands that his passion for Cincinnati and being from Cincinnati is really a, a, an incredible foundation to stand on. And uh, our practice facility is terrific, but now we've got to figure out with fifth third being over 25 years old to figure out, all right, how do we renovate that or look at that or create a, a similar environment that we have at Nippert that's incredibly uh, intimate and one that can be a great place for our students and our fans and, and the community to enjoy being a part of. You love the American, but are you actively looking to try and do something? Because the Power Five and the other guys, I mean, everybody knows what you have to do to survive. Where is that? Well, there's no question that our Board of Trustees, our President Santa Ono, who does a phenomenal job on a national scene, trying to understand all the different moving pieces. And uh, we recognize that the American Conference uh, has had a lot of successes last year. Two national championships, right. UCF's win in the, in the uh, Fiesta Bowl, things along that line. And now we've got to figure out a way for the University of Cincinnati to be the class of the league, to be recognized as an institution and a program and uh, uh, a group of coaches that people want to be around and be a part of. And so we want to compete at the highest level. And I believe that we've shown that we can do that regardless of what conference we're in, and that's really where our focus is, to ensure we do a great job of letting people know that the University of Cincinnati is committed to playing at the highest level, and uh, we want to continue to do everything we can to demonstrate the power Mike Oresco talks about in the American Athletic Conference and see if we can pull that together. Friday night against Toledo, Paul Brown Stadium. Mike Bone, thanks for playing yeah. along tonight. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. All Go right. Bearcats. First. It's time for a little perfection, but straight ahead when sports of all sorts continues. Oh, no, he didn't. Well, wait a minute. What do you see? Yes, he did. And now, for the first time in this show, a little perfection from the place that's perfect to meet at, Parker's Tavern in Blue Ash. The Ohio State Buckeyes didn't win Saturday night, but they did give us this. 
Buckeye wideout Dontre Wilson comes up with an amazing grab in the second quarter of the Virginia Tech Ohio State game. Check it out just one more time. Perfect. Well, it would have been if it led to a win, but pretty darn close. And that's Parker's perfect play brought to you by Parker's Tavern in Blue Ash.
Welcome back to Meyer Sports of All Sorts. In a moment, a play you've got to see to believe. But first, it's time for the always entertaining and certainly delicious Domino's Pizza Puzzler. The Yankees honored Derek Jeter today. He's retiring after 20 season in pinstripes. They had a lot of fun with Jeter, sending him out to the field while his teammates remained behind in the dugout. Here's the question. In his career, how many All-Star games did Jeter play in? If you think you know the answer, send it along to this address by regular mail with a stamp to the address on your screen, or you can always email. We get those too. And that's this week's Domino's Pizza Puzzler. Get the door. It's Domino's. It's been a rough week for the Cincinnati Reds, which leads us to our Reds recap. The Reds went two and five in the last seven days, but two bright spots. Saturday night, Chris Heisey hit this, the difference in a Reds two to one win. That was a Heisey special who went four for 12 and drove in four and hit three home runs last week. Devin Mesorocco had a nice night on Thursday night in a loss to Baltimore going four for four. But the real bummer was the news that pitcher Homer Bailey isn't just done for the season. He'll need surgery on his arm. And that could put the start of his 2015 season in jeopardy. And now to a segment we like to call, oh no he didn't. Well, as you're about to find out, actually it, it did happen. To New York, where even the stars love the stars. That's his picture. Look at this. with Serena, how about that selfie? That's right. He's got the wingspan to make that a pretty good Welcome back. In a moment, a play you got to see to believe. But first, it's time for the always entertaining and certainly delicious Domino's Pizza Puzzler. Well, the Yankees honored Derek Jeter on Sunday, retiring after 20 seasons in pinstripes. They had a little fun with Jeter, sending him out to the field while all of his teammates remained in the dugout. Here's the question. In his career, how many All-Star games did Derek Jeter play in? If you think you know the answer, send it along to that address on your screen. Regular mail needs a stamp. Email, well, you need a computer. And that's this week's Domino's Pizza Puzzler. Get the door. It's Domino's. It's been a rough week for the Cincinnati Reds, which leads us to our Reds recap. The Reds went two and five in the last seven days, but two bright spots. 
Saturday, Chris Heisey hit this, the difference in a 2-1 Reds win. Big hit for Heisey. He was 4 of 12 this past week. He drove in four and hit three home runs. Another bright spot, a 4 for 4 night for catcher Devin Mesoraco on Thursday night in a loss at Baltimore. But the real bummer this week was the news that pitcher Homer Bailey isn't just done for the season. He'll need surgery on his arm that could put the start of his 2015 season in jeopardy. And now to that segment we like to call, oh no he didn't. Well, as you're about to see, it did actually happen. To New York, where even the stars love the stars. That's the fastest man on two feet, Usain Bolt, slowing down just enough to get the reigning U.S. Open champ, Serena Williams, to pose for a selfie. Now when someone says, oh, no, he didn't, no, you can say why, yes, he did. And with that, we'll say good night. Now remember, we are on live Monday morning at 7 a.m. sharp on WCPO.com with the Flying Pigskin. You can call in, you can Skype, just be in front of your computer or mobile device for a lot of Bengals talk Monday morning, 7 a.m. on WCPO.com. For all of us here downtown on now this Monday morning, we offer sweet dreams from Gilbert Avenue. Good night, everybody. <laughs>